Hello and welcome to another video. So today I'm going to talk about something very exciting, which is food. Something really awkward happened. I was actually recognized. I think the only people that are watching this are my parents and maybe a handful of friends. It seems like I even managed to reach people with this channel that I did not know. Today so I went to this restaurant with a few people that I knew and some people I didn't know. And one of the guys was like, do you have a YouTube channel? And I was like, oh my god, this is embarrassing. But at the same time, I felt like super proud. And the funny thing is, the guy is now living in the same co-living as me. And he's a super nice guy. I'm glad I met him. And he said it's very useful. And he also watched the other video. So hi, Mario, <laughs> if you're watching, I'm talking about you. Kind of motivated me to do a few more videos. So here you go. Yeah, so I'm still in Las Palmas. And I'm going to tell you about the places I've eaten, places that people recommended to me. Yeah, so let's get started. Yeah, so first I want to talk about Spanish food, of course, because we're in Gran Canaria. And there's one place which I absolutely love called La Taberna de Mieso. It's more like mainland Spain food rather than Canarian food, but it's really good. I've been there a few times and I had quite a few dishes from the menu. One of the things I really, really enjoyed were their samarinas, I think this is how you say it in Spanish, I'm not sure, which is basically scallops and they presented really nicely how you usually do with scallops, they were really really good. They also have amazing papas arrugadas, which is um, very typical for Spain, which is basically like um, small potatoes and I think they boil it in very very salty water to give it that texture and flavor and you usually get it with uh, mojo, which is also a very typical Canarian food. You cannot be in Gran Canaria without having had that, so definitely go try that dish. It doesn't have to be in the Tabiana del Viejo which I think, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's actually quite difficult if you're a vegetarian to find something there. It's difficult, but they can adapt. So I went there with a the veggie friend and we just removed prawns from the fried vegetables with prawns and things like that. So it's also like great service because usually in Las Palmas, what I notice is like it can be a bit slow. But yeah, the service there was great. The food was amazing. So that's one of my favorite places here. Another Spanish restaurant here I really recommend is one next to the sea. It's called Bar El Campino. I went there with my parents because they came to visit me for a week and they had pulpo, so like octopus, which I almost always order, which is, I know it's not, it's not the best thing, but it's just so delicious. And there you actually get the whole octopus, not just the test te tentacle. I almost said testicle here. Um, I remember a situation where my ex-boyfriend, who was British, still is probably, still is British, but ex-boyfriend, came to visit and my dad showed him pictures of an animal he found and he was talking about the testicles of this animal, meaning tentacles. And it was like, I was trying to keep a straight face, but it was, it was funny. Um, anyway, so the pulpo there is a whole pulpo not just the tentacles. It can be a bit off-putting if you don't want to see the whole animal you're eating, but then we're so detached from our food anyway, we should be aware of what we're eating and we're actually eating an animal. So it was really, really good. It had really good flavors as well. Yeah, and we also had some dish which my dad ordered. I don't remember what it was called. I think something like fabada, fabada something like that. It was nice. Um, it tasted good, flavor was good but it was a little bit warm, like it wasn't hot as you would expect from something like this because it looked like a stew. Another place which I highly, highly, highly recommend to anyone who comes here is a place called, and I'm gonna probably say it wrong, Bodegon Pachichi. You have to book, it's usually very busy. It is very popular here and if you make a booking, maybe find someone who can speak Spanish who can make the booking for you. It's really delicious and it's also like very, very affordable. So I was there once for my birthday. We were like maybe 10 people and we paid 12 euros each, including drinks and all. And last time I went, we were also around the same amount of people and we paid like seven euros each. Definitely go for the chorizos. They're really, really nice. It's also quite a bit of a spectacle when you kind of grill it on the table. They also have very nice croquettes. And of course, again, as everywhere, papas avocados. And yeah, you can get like huge jugs of beer, like bottles of beer there, which we shared, and wine, of course. So yeah, altogether it was like really, really affordable and it's a really nice place. Go there when you're not too hungry and when you have a lot of patience, because the service is a little bit slow, but it's definitely worth the wait. 
and yeah, it's it's a really nice Spanish Canarian restaurant, so I highly recommend going there. And a lot of restaurants offer something called menu del dia, which is basically the daily menu. It's usually a three course meal, and you get starter, main, a dessert, a drink included. And for dessert, you can usually choose between a coffee and a dessert. So it's quite a lot of food, and they range between 8 to 12 euros depending on where you go. So it's very good value for money. That specific place I went to, which is more in the old town, like it's called something Lagunetas. I'll put it in the description, like all the other restaurants that I mentioned. The service was good, it was quite busy during lunchtime, so I didn't quite know the menu and I asked the waiter what the menu de dia options are. And I asked him with like my very, very below average Spanish and he maybe assumed that I understand better than what I can speak. And then he was just like, da -da 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 -da, ensalada, da -da 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 -da. I was like, okay, I'll go for the salad. But also, on another note, salad here isn't necessarily what we, when I say we, I mean people from Austria or people from England or um, other places in Europe are expecting. I mean, <laughs> other places in Europe is Spain as well, but anyway, when I talk about salad, I think about something green, vegetables, you know. They gave me a Russian salad, which isn't really a salad. <laughs> it's a potato salad with mayonnaise. Um, so yeah, just be aware of that if you order salad that it's not always something great, but it was really good. Not the kind of food that I was craving, because I expected a salad, but it was still good. It was really good. That was just the starter. I had a ropa vieja as a main, which was also nice. I had better ropa viejas, but it wasn't a bad one. Definitely also try that. It's kind of like a, this chickpea stew dish, and it's really, really good. And it's one of those dishes I think every country has, where like a, a poor people farmer's dish became a bit more mainstream because it actually tastes good. Like one of those leftover meals that then become like quite a popular meal um, within a country. Yeah, and the, for dessert I had, uh, again, no idea what they offered because the QR code didn't work, uh, or like my Wi-Fi uh, played up. So I just asked the waitress what she suggested was the best one, which one she would order. And then she came uh, back with this flan, and it was really nice. I don't usually like flan, but this one was really, really good. So yeah, their, their menu no idea was good, but of course like they change it like every restaurant from uh, depending on what weekday you have, etc. So you might not be able to get exactly the same meal, but they will probably have the same dishes a la carte. So um, yeah, feel free to go and try that restaurant. And of course, when we talk about Spanish food, we have to talk about churros. I think they might actually originate from somewhere in Asia. But it's like other dishes, like, you know, croissants, people think of France, but they're actually from Vienna, but then actually from Turkey. So, yeah, I don't really know, but Spain is known for churros. But also, I met um, a mainland Spanish guy here who said the churros that you get here, they don't, wouldn't consider them as churros because they're like thicker and soft in the middle and theirs are kind of like thinner and crispier. And I don't usually like churros because they're just crispy and to me it doesn't taste like much like it does but it's just like consistency whereas the ones i had here with the softness in the middle and stuff are like so um we went to this place near the market in um, las palmas and they made them fresh in front of us and then you get like a, a cup with melted chocolate and you dip it in and it's just really really nice and um, i'll put the link in the comments as well because i don't remember what the place was called but it was really good it was actually a local that showed a girl that I met here and me that place and he said that this is where he would get their, his jurors from so it's always good to get recommendations from locals hmm. okay the sun is setting this is gonna be a shit show in the edit another thing you can do here and I mean I'm, I'm very privileged earning a UK salary and currently being in Spain everything feels like very very cheap for me and what I would usually pay in London is um, like way more than what I would pay here. There are quite a lot of uh, Michelin star restaurants, but I'm not sure if they actually have a Michelin star or if they're just in the Michelin guide. Like I went to a few and we paid like between 40 and 60 euros for each of them, which for the UK is what you would spend on a normal night out when you have meals and cocktails anyway. But here you get like really, really high quality food. So we went and tried out a few of those places and my absolute favorite is Kileche. Um, we were like six, seven people, 
and I think we tried like eight dishes. They were really, really, really good. We had, I don't even remember what we had, I barely took any pictures because as soon as the plate was on the table we were just like eating because every dish felt like it was better than the one before. Like definitely go there, the service is great. They swap the plates after every meal, so the flavors from before, if you had like a ceviche and the sauce is still on the plate, doesn't interfere with the plate that, uh, with the dish that you have next. Like my favorite was the dessert. They had this like passion fruit dessert with ice cream and it was just really, really good. And I'm gonna brag on about the other passion fruit desserts they have here. I think I discovered a new favorite for me. So any dessert I've had here so far, which, had had, which has had passion fruit in it, was really good. So if you find any of those, try them. You will have to make a reservation before. It's not too difficult to make a reservation there. They do speak English. Another place we went to was Lupe. I think it's also in the Michelin Guide, I'm not 100% sure. But the food was really good. Again, I didn't take many pictures. They had this cheese aubergine with, I don't know if it was honey or something else, but the flavors just went so well together. They also had these like cannelloni with seafood inside and it was just such good flavors. Also check that plate out, place out. Um, you will again have to book that, but yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Another more high-end restaurant we went to was called um, Eclectic, Electric, Eclectic. There we had a tasting menu and I actually took a picture of every single dish because the other people did too, so I didn't feel too guilty taking pictures. It was, I think, like 40, 45 euros for the tasting and then with the wine and all and tips we came to about 60, 65 euros each, uh, which I think was okay for what we had, but I did like Kilic a little bit more, so I would have rather gone to that place again than spending the money on, on Eclectic. Um, but it was still nice trying it, and they had like some really, really nice courses. So we had this starter, and there was another course where I'm not really sure what was in it. It was crispy, but both of those dishes looked very similar. The taste was different though. We also had some uh, pulpo and some ravioli filled with some kind of beef thing, which was really good. My absolute favorite course was the prawns. Um, they look very simple, but the flavor was just perfect and the quality of the prawns was really, really good as well. There was also like this nice soup, which was really tasty. And the uh, dessert was some coconutty thing. It, it wasn't like too much the type of dessert that I like, um, but it was still like a nice dessert. Okay, I was just changing cameras, turns on the lights and stuff. Remind me if I make a video in the future, to not start filming like five to ten minutes before sunset because anyway let's continue with more affordable food another place i actually went to today which was the santa catalina hotel they have a restaurant there but they also do brunch on sundays you are in their restaurant and they have live music and a jazz band and they have this great buffet and you have unlimited um, Prosecco, orange juice, coffee, motto of course um, and yeah it's an all-you-can-eat buffet so yeah my double chin can tell you yeah it was it was really really good it is um, around 40 euros per person it's also really good value for money so it's like around three hours so I did put it into like the not overly fancy but also not cheap category because for what you get it is actually quite good value especially if you consider all the drinks you're getting from it as soon as you sit down they pour the water the orange juice prosecco coffee you have to order extra so like they don't come and ask you but like it's included the buffet was just like really beautifully arranged and everything tasted really nice they had great cheeses and jamon all kinds of fruits some breads of course they also had their own chef that would freshly prepare eggs for you, even steak. You would find anything from coquettas to a chocolate mousse cake to um, prawns. It was it was really, really good value for money. I took my parents there because they came to visit me and I wanted to show them a nice time. And I thought like they will enjoy the jazz music, which they did. It was also a bit fun because I think I was the youngest person there. Everyone else was middle-aged, fancy housewives, <laughs> but it was fun. Go there, take some friends and enjoy the meal, it's it's really good. You have to also book that and you also have to pay for it in advance, which can also be nice because once you're stuffed and full you can just get up and leave. You will definitely not leave hungry. Yeah, I didn't even eat the rest of the day. I highly recommend that. 
Another place which is really nice is called Mari Pili. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct. The restaurant is nicely decorated, has a nice interior design and they actually have quite decent cocktails. I ordered one which I wasn't sure it would work because it was like half wine and half passion fruit or something and when they serve it to you it's also split so you see like the red from the wine and the yellow from the passion fruit and you're not sure should I mix it, should I drink it separately but it was really good. And I had ramen, which were not that great. There's actually another ramen restaurant, which I highly recommend. So if you want ramen, go to that one, um, which is gonna be, I'll point you to what minute you have to skip. All the other food was great. The ramen weren't that bad, but it was just like very salty. I think the other dishes would have been better. Another restaurant, which was a little bit more fancy, but not overly crazy fancy, was called Alende something. It was really nice. This is actually where I met the guy who recognized me. But yeah, very delicious food. And again, they had a passion fruit dessert. Oh my god, like passion fruit. Like there was this cheesecake with the passion fruit thing, which was good. We had like, I think ceviche, different, I don't even know. I'm going to put some pictures here. This is what we had, or some, some of what we had. Yeah, really, really, really good. Another place which we went to was recommended to one of my friends by the taxi driver. The restaurant was called La Bodeguia. Again, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. But I think it was also in that street Ristalda, which has a whole bunch of restaurants there. You will probably find something, whatever you fancy, you will find on that street. It was actually quite nice, but I do think some dishes were not that great. There was one though, which if you're a meat lover, you will absolutely love this. They had like the most high quality beef and they like maybe fry it for a second in the kitchen and then they bring it to you with a hot stone. So if that's too raw for you, you can keep cooking it. Such delicious meat, like really, really, really good. We also had like these other things, I'm not really sure, like crab scissors or something, I think, um, they literally translate to. Those were really good too. So if you're like, pour a little lemon over it, like really, really nice. I would not bother with the desserts there. Like they were, like they had this thing which they called like creme brulee, but it was basically like water and flour mix. It was just like, it didn't taste well. Also didn't have a passion fruit dessert. Maybe that's the reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the meat was really, really good. Those clam thingies were good. And there might be other dishes which were really nice, but yeah, don't bother with the desserts. Another place which was probably a little bit more expensive for Spanish people, but if you have a UK salary, German salary, <laughs> um, Swedish salary, whatever, was called Dauka, Dakoa, Dakoa, Dakoa. There we had a few dishes. Again, I didn't take pictures. I think the only picture I took was of the black papas avocado. I don't know how they make them look like this because it didn't taste burnt. It looked really nice with the red mojo on top. It was very delicious as well. One dish which I thought I would not like, which was probably one of the most favorite dishes I ate here, was this uh, noodle dish uh, with prawns and coconut. It was really, really, really good. So definitely go and try that. They also had some beef and it was so well cooked in, in a good way that when you tried to take off the bones to put it on your plate, the meat literally fell off and stuck on the main plate and you ended up just with the bone. So yeah, order that beef as well. And again, for desserts, they had something with passion fruit. They had like this passion fruit panna cotta. Oh my God, like I'm, I'm not gonna stop talking about passion fruit and then, oh, maybe this is the last passion fruit. Maybe I'm gonna stop talking about it. But yeah, order that. It was really, really good. So now let's talk about a little bit more everyday, more affordable food. There's also a lot of everyday, very affordable food um, here on the island, so I wouldn't call it like super cheap, but still very cheap. Most of the plate, there were like quite a bunch in Plaza de Farai and quite a bunch in uh, Ruiz de Alda, which I did mention that street before where we had that nice beef. The restaurants I'm going to mention now, they're all in this Ruiz de Alda street. So one was uh, Mr. Kale. I wasn't actually in that specific one. There is also another one in the old town, but the food was very similar. If you're more veggie or vegan, I would recommend to go there. It's a lot of choices. So it's quite an overwhelming menu. They have everything from wok dishes to poke bowls 
to curries to burritos to pancakes to I don't even anything you could think of they probably have and we had some fried vegetables as well which were also really nice another restaurant on that street is called Michele really 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 good we had some ceviche some delicious prawns the scrambled eggs they called them Ruvelto, Ruvelto, Ruvelto. Again, sorry for my pronunciation, but basically it's like scrambled. So they have like um, scrambled eggs with, I think we ordered it with Spanish, they had a few other options with scrambled eggs, and that was really delicious as well. The service was great, we had the nicest waiter. Yeah, so definitely try that place as well. Another place we went to, which is I think on the same street as Lupe, was some Venezuelan place and it's called um, Corazon de Venezuela. We were quite a big group and we ordered a bunch of dishes and they were all really good and like really, really large portions. If you order anything filled with meat and stuff, it's like properly filled, like every bite you would have meat in it. Yeah, if you fancy Venezuelan food, I mean, I don't know how original it is, but it was really, really good. There's also a few places near Plaza de Farai. One place is uh, called Organic Jungle. I went there for brunch and oh my God, like the brunch plates are so delicious. I think you can also work from there during the day. If you're here and you're a digital nomad or you need to do some work, you can probably go and work from the Organic Jungle. They do have some signs on the, play, uh, on the tables though, which says like that they would prefer if you would not sit on your laptop on busy times. So I'm not sure how welcoming they are if you wanted to work from there. I've not actually worked from there, so I don't know what the Wi-Fi quality is like and stuff. But if you want to go for brunch, I highly recommend it. If you do want to find out which coffee shops you can comfortably work from, I'm going to make another video about that. And once it exists, I'm gonna link it wherever or in the description, just yeah, somewhere. We also went to an Indonesian restaurant and we had some curry there, some fried vegetables. That was also really nice. That's also not that far away from Plaza de Frey. Yeah, and then another place we went to was that ramen place, which is right opposite Lupe. And it was really, really good. I was actually quite surprised that you get this high quality ramen here. I've never been to Japan, so I don't know if the ramen are actually like proper, proper ramen, but I found them tasty. Way better than the ramen I had in the Mari Pili place. I had the spicy ones. They were not crazy spicy, but decently spiced and yeah. So yeah, that's it. I think I've talked a lot about the restaurants. Yes, I've been here two months. That's a lot of time to explore places. And of course I cooked for myself as well. If you want to buy groceries, there's a lot of uh, supermarkets here, but I do recommend to check out one of the Hippodinos because I just love how much choice you have. They're two stories, they're huge. You get so much stuff. It's just like the amount of canned food. They, like I find it so interesting to go to a supermarket in other cultures because it shows you what's important to them. Like you can get jamon, like the whole leg, in basically every supermarket here, no matter how small it is. <laughs> yeah, this was my food talk. I hope I didn't tire you as I did with the sun. Yeah, I hope you'll try one of those restaurants. Let me know in the comments which one you think was the most delicious. Also, if you have any other recommendations of restaurants, of course, please add it to the comments as well so that other people that um, come across this video can check those places out. And yeah. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe subscribe and hopefully I'll see you again soon.